Thank you very much, Councilman Khalid. Councilman Jackson. I'm going to summarize it very quickly, Council President. I think we spent a great deal of time here. Um, but uh, we all have to acknowledge, all of us, all of us who live here, those of us who own businesses here, um, you know, just having a conversation with a fellow business owner the other day, we talked about the, the lack of economic flow throughout the city and which is very relevant and pertinent in order to have a successful or a, a vibrant uh, business community. And the business community is what, feed, what feeds the, the, uh, the housing community and the public that walks around. You don't have a vibrant business community and, and economic value running through the city. It's very um, trick tough to have a, a, a vibrant community. So, we, and we all have to acknowledge that our history has gotten us to this point, our history. And it's very relevant towards how we were treated in the past. You know, when you tell people something and you run it, you know, run the game on them, and if they're not familiar with it, they become victims to the circumstances, right? So my very first night in the council, I'm extremely proud to talk about this. My very first night, I hit the ground running. These same $140 million in earth credits was presented my first night in the council. Then the proposal was a hotel on the campus of the hospital. And I, as I consistently do, put the gloves on and immediately went to work. The then Councilman Morris had given me credit as a young rookie for coming on and pointing out several things. Those $140 million in tax credits was gonna go towards one building, which was supposed to have like a, uh, a, rec, uh, a uh, community space convention. similar to the convention. Brownstone. It's like a- yeah, But also convention. A convention center, a convention space. And it did, it, when, I, when I began to drill down on it and talk about the procurement, where the purchases was gonna go, the guarantee on jobs, and the outline on the jobs, not just in the, in the areas of maintenance and housekeeping, but also in the, in the areas of, uh, of, of administration. There was a lot of pushback. In fact, shortly thereafter, the hospital pulled out. They didn't want any parts of it. We had several meetings, Councilman, Councilman McCoy and myself, and a few other council people, Councilwoman Davila, with developers, potential developers, to look at the values, to look at how, what's the cross comparisons to other communities. So the hospital pulled out, they didn't want any parts of it because it didn't spell out economic growth. So when you look at the consistency of what these projects are doing, they still don't return any value. So I'm proud and I'm happy about Councilwoman Mims this evening because I consistently talked about the lack of attention that we've given to the African American community and how just the corridor of Spruce Street and the Great Falls, it does not represent Patterson. I consistently, I'll go back to the videotape because it's on my page to talk about how these projects do not impact the kid that's on North Main, a kid that's in the fourth ward, a kid that's on, a kid that's on, on uh, Governor Street. They don't, they don't have any impact on them. So when you talk about putting a stadium in there and a senior citizen housing, with 50 jobs, I mean, his mom, his mother may not even have an opportunity to get a job. So I supported this economic development director's uh, uh, um, position when the mayor presented him, but I'll be quite honest with you, we missed the mark. Not one person on this administration has yet to talk about the benefit back to the black community, and the African American community was one of the biggest starch supporters of this current administration. This economic development director comes here with, with a smug attitude. I was almost going to cuss. I, I almost made a big mistake right there. Councilman. Because I'm, I'm, I'm on my, my P's and Q's, but I'm very frustrated with his attitude. You know, he sits over there and, and, and facetiously laughs at people who are struggling, the real struggle. I had a kid who just his best friend was shot and killed at the towers. He gets in his car and drives outside this community every single day and has yet to have the respect for me to come down and say, listen, let's have a discussion on how this project could positively impact the ills of those people in your ward. He gives me his behind the kiss. 
I did support him and his confirmation because I worked with him in the past and there's been several times I've come to this dais and said, you know what, I don't believe in that project. My past history would have been to vote against it, but I'm gonna give you the vote of confidence, Mr. Powell, because I, I'm gonna give you an opportunity to prove to me that you can do this job. What has he done? He's given me his tail to kiss. And this right here is the results we get. When you look at the entire project that's been, pre that's been presented with the ERG credits, the overlook for the falls, it's beautiful. I love it. This ain't Niagara Falls, but it's gonna cost $3,100 a square foot. When I've shown you, Madam Clerk, can you please put that, let that projector back on? When I've shown you the national average is 125. I don't have more, just one number that's just sitting there waiting. But when you talk about the fact that no one from our community, the longest standing community in here, the people that have paid the biggest price, the people that are targeted more often by law enforcement, the people that are less likely to be employed, the people that are less likely to have opportunities, we have yet to present a plan that's gonna bring forward opportunities. That's our economic development director. Zero, he would not ever get my support again on another confirmation. I could care less how the rest of the council votes, but he doesn't live here and he doesn't care about it. Obviously, does not care about the community because he's yet to address any of these concerns. I've, I brought forward a plan. The last time we had a developer here, he had a, a plan to, to, to purchase a lot of land for double the price that this economic development director was offering it for. He wanted to sell the armory site for 1.5. The developer came in responsibly said, I'll pay 3 million. We all, all the council members gave him credit. Every council member took their hat. I said, Mr. Developer, I respect you. I appreciate you for valuing our city, for offering the best price possible and not trying to go backwards and Jew us down. So we got that money and I said, you would get my support, you get my support, but I would hate to see my young people walking past that site every day. And these are facts, this is not me uh, uh, changing my position. I said, I would hate to see my young people walk past this site every day and have to look at this great building that you're putting up and not have anything. Are you willing to do it and to, do, uh, to help out at the field house to do an expansion? The developer said, I'll meet you there tomorrow. He, the next day he was there with his architect, he brought forward a plan to do a two-story expansion on the field house that would allow us to provide a training table, uh, real training rooms with ice tubs, study halls, state-of-the-art state weight room, a recreation space so our kids are not just hanging out on the street, so we don't have to lock them out the way we lock them out the Buckley Park. Buckley Park stays locked every day. We just spent $1.5 million on it, and the administration locks, locks everybody else out and wants to charge residents now $200 an hour just to use it because it's a, tur it's a new turf field. We pay for that already. The taxpayers have paid for that already. Why are we charging people? It should be open the way every single school should be open in this community so we can keep people off the street. Okay, Councilman. I'm Can very quickly. Please. Sorry, I'm sorry. This is very important, Council President. So anyway, now Councilman Abdelaziz, who I have a great deal of respect for, I call him often to get some insight that he might have because he has a great deal of knowledge and professional background. Yes, this will go before the planning board. Guess what? Every member on the planning board is appointed by the mayor. So they're going to do what the mayor, they quick phone call, hey, you know what? Uh, sure, no problem. <coughs> So when we talk about collaboration, and let's talk about where the balls really drop, because what's going to happen here after, and I'm, I'm hoping, I'm, I got my fingers crossed, because- uh, Councilman, I, I really want to- Very quickly, I'll wrap uh, you it up have, right here. No, but Councilman, I want to say this. We have been almost two hours with this, and you have had, and you are on record with everything that you're saying. Okay. You are repeating something. So let me something. close out. Let Can me you close just out. please yes. wrap it up? Thank I'll you. close out. So Council, Councilwoman Cotton, pointed out the fact that this job is prevailing wages. If you look at what I pointed out for $1.125, $65 to $85 an hour, that is prevailing wages. So that's not a short on that. And the last thing in closing, the responsibility falls back on the mayor. We should have had a joint meeting, school board council, milled everything over, looked at all the tax credits, looked at the benefit of it, and if there is no plan B, how is that the council's fault? 
This should have been a plan laid out. Well, if this plan does, is a contingent on certain things, and if it doesn't work, what is the plan B? So now I ask, where are we at now? Where, what is the plan B? But I'll let it rest there. Thank you, Council President. You're the best. Council President, I'd like to. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. B.A. Easy. Can we have Councilwoman, Councilwoman Cotton come inside if she's out she's there, here, please? She's here. She's here. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I looked over. Look, I looked over and I can't see you. I really don't want any council member to get up, please. Council President, let the, I, the BA have some. Excuse me? I just had to gather it, myself okay. because, Councilman Jackson, I, I think you owe this council and everybody sitting in the galley an apology because you said something that I think is totally inappropriate for a council person, for any person, to utter what you said in referring to how a certain group of people bargain. I heard it, and I think everybody in this council chamber heard it, and I was offended by it, that I had to walk outside the room, but I could not allow myself to let that comment go without apologizing to the community and the group that may have been offended by Councilman Jackson's statement. I think it's reprehensible, and I think there's no place in the council chamber for what you said, sir. Council members. Council President. To everyone out there, to our director, to our developers, when this project first came, and I'm going to repeat myself. I was totally against it. And I still don't agree with a lot of things. And the director knows it very well, and so does the, the entire group um, that's presenting this project. But I, too, like to go home at night and lay down and say, what did I do to make Patterson better? What did I do today? And so I have the utmost respect for every council member here. I do. And one of the first individuals that I have is my, my vice president that I fully support. But just like in families, right? You can have a fight and you can have a disagreement but it doesn't mean that I don't support you. And so I don't agree with certain things that certain council members said today. Because the first time around, we needed to have the same energy that we have today to try to say that this project is not a good project. To me, I felt that we were able to sit back at the table and that we were able to have more input. And so I can't sit here today and just say, I sat in a meeting various times, I think three additional times, and we requested things as a team. And we brought it forth to a workshop where every council member was able to put forth questions or suggestions and so I needed to just say that. Um, we're gonna take a vote, Madam Clerk, but I need everyone here to understand that we understand that this project is definitely not a, it, it isn't a perfect project. But I think about if I go home tonight and this goes the other way, where will we be in the next five years? Because those tax earned credits need to be used up. And we, they were already presented to the state as a project that is in uh, a possible agreement coming forth. And so therefore, there's some consideration for it. At the end of the day, you know, I say to myself, all right. And probably this is a question to the economic development director. What happens if they get denied? 
What happens to those they, tax they go away. credits? They go away. They go away. Yeah. So then you the, mean the developer, you mean the tax or credits? The tax <laughs> credits evaporate. The, the developer could go away now. <laughs> okay. We vote? Okay. You have something to say or are you just telling me? I, to, uh, uh, Council President. Councilman Kalik. <laughs> wait, 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 because I'm speaking. Everybody had their time. Go ahead. Um, I've seen on the agreement there's a lot of financial components, meaning you guys getting finance from different entities. Mm -hmm. What happens if one of them doesn't approve your project and they don't give you the money? So the main entity is EDA, and that's the meeting that we have tomorrow. That's the main entity, the um, historic, federal, state. We have uh, strategies for those. But the main one is, that, is the ERG. And so if the, the one that would tank the project is the meeting that we're having tomorrow. Um, the other one, components of it, wouldn't tank the project. What happened if the other one, one of them doesn't? Uh... Yeah, we'll be able, we'll be able to, um, the other ones, we'll be able to bridge those gaps. Those are different funding entities. So the project is historic tax credits, um, federal, state, and then there's new markets. Those are the four, four components of it. So, um, so those are the only ones. There are historic tax credits. Those are just based on making sure you comply with all the historic components of it. That's for federal and state. And the new market is getting an allocation. So those are, um, those are not a yes or no in the context. Those are which entity? The yes or no is EDA. OK, all right. Um, Madam Clerk. Roll yes, call on item number four. Yes, Madam President. Item for first number, reading. Yes, item number four for first reading. I'll just read the title again. An ordinance authorizing amendment of lease of Hinchliffe Stadium 216-218 Maple Street from the school district and potential receipt of title to an adjoining lot to facilitate, facilitate rehabilitation of the site administration there was a motion on the floor by Councilman Abdelaziz, second by Councilman Rivera. <laughs> Roll call on item number four for first reading, Councilman Abdelaziz. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, You're welcome. So we've had a pretty- Extensive. Excuse me? Extensive. We have had excessive debate and I think passion and, and people get passionate about certain <laughs> topics and sometimes things get out of hand. Um, before I vote, I just want to reiterate also what the BA said. If I think I heard what I heard, and, and I think the best thing for families to, um, you don't have to call, 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 you know, say things when we disagree. And, and, and I reiterate what the BA says, and I agree what he says. That stuff shouldn't be in this chamber. But passion and, and, and this excessive debate has brought things out that, you know, that I never want to see again in this chamber and on this, hopefully this project goes forward for the best of the city of Patterson. My vote is yes. Thank you. Councilwoman Cotton. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, sitting here and listening to all the debates and, and all the reasonings for having it and not having it, um, you know, the component um, that I like in there is the senior housing. I went to a building today there's a three-year waiting list for senior housing in this city, three years. And so, you know, that is so important that we put that in place. And even when they talked about the daycare, you know, I know what it is. We really still do not have enough early childhood. We do not have enough daycares. Um, you know, just to be able for the children from the schools to play again, you know, we have to think about that. For them to be able to come on their field and. And, 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 and to be able to enjoy. But I just want to say too, you know, last year, you know, we don't get an opportunity sometimes to go to conferences and conventions, you know, because we as council members have to pay our own way. So when you do get a chance to go and we pay our own way, I do my best to meet people that I know that can come into my city um, that can help me. Because to me, it's about meeting other people that have great ideas that can come here and say, what can we do? And let me just say, I had the opportunity to meet Bayas Wilson, who took the city of Newark out of their 
problems, and they were in major problems. So I have faith in this young man that he's going to do the right thing about this Hitchcliffe Stadium. Raise your hand so they can see you. I met him last year. He's the one that took the city of Newark out of that $96 million deficit that they had. So if we're going to look at the senior housing, and when you go somewhere, and I get at least four or five calls a day, listen to me, a day, for seniors looking for senior housing, looking for a place to live based on income. And what I'm saying income, most of our seniors can only pay anywhere from two to $300 a month rent. So this is a, a component in there that is so important. And I know this is the first reading, and I have faith in Mr. Wilson of, of putting this project together and making sure that it gets right. So Madam Clerk, my vote is yes. Thank you. Councilman Jackson. Thank you, Madam Clerk. <clears throat> First of all, let me start by saying never would I make any apology for the passion that I have and the commitment that I bring forward for my community. But I have a tremendous amount of respect for Brother McCoy and he's uh, been a mentor and person I looked up to for quite some time and he's absolutely right. Um, that was meant with no malice. It was a statement indicative of my upbringing, of where it was a term that was often used as children as we in our communities use other terms of endearment that now for some has, have, has become um, forsaken. But I don't want to allow that an opportunity to steal the light from the misrepresentation that we have for these, for our young black people and Hispanic people in this community. When the outcries went out for Jameek Lowry. It was complete silence from the administration. I made one, I made one mistake, and, it's in, in, and, I, and I see where this is going. So the attempt for it to make it to the front page of the paper that Councilman Jackson is insensitive, I didn't know if, if Mr. Powell or anyone else that was there is of that religious background, and it wasn't meant to be in a stab at anyone of that, of that religious background. I have a tremendous amount of respect for all groups of people. But what I also have a great deal of respect for is myself. And I'm not going to allow myself to be sold to anything. And, you know, when we look at the senior housing in this community and Penrose deals that we have that's been going on with other people, go over to those housing de developments and talk to those seniors in there and talk about how they're mistreated and those management companies that's brought in and how they take away the, the rec rooms that they have and all of a sudden they make changes and everything. We can't continue to allow us to be sold anything. <clears throat> so I stand firm on my commitment. I don't care who changes their vote, who voted in favor the first time who voted. I will vote, and you all know, if I'm eight in favor and one against, I will have, I'll be proud to stand on it. And I think that, you know, as I remain diligent, people have an opportunity to learn. Council President one day gave me the, the acknowledgement that, you know, in the past she didn't agree, but then after I'm consistent, she saw it from a different perspective. And that's what this is all about. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's not about the, to, to badger anyone or to discredit, but I'll tell you one thing. I do, people who are endowed and paid a substantial amount of money, they, there's a, a larger responsibility that comes with that, with, that, with that job. You took the job. I didn't. I didn't ask for you to come here and take the job. But for some reason, we feel as if everyone from outside has these answers, and yet our resources are continuously poured out of the, of the community. When you sell a 17-acre lot for less than a million dollars, 17 acres, if you just do the math, based on the one acre we sold, for three million, 17 acres, that's 58 million, 51 million dollars that it should have been, but our community gets shortchanged. Walmart came in and said, you know what, give us seven acres and we will come in, create 500 jobs where our seniors will have opportunities. We didn't even entertain it because people keep saying we need, we need housing. While we continuously overcrowd our community without parking, then we go out and write tickets to the members of our community for parking too close to the corner of a crosswalk. 
while we have illegal buses parking all over the place, while we have inspectors poorly treated and never being represented clearly by the administration, have compassion for that. Jump on top of that. So I respect it. You know, the statement should have never been made, and, and I, f I ask everyone to please forgive me for my brief uh, uh, lack of insensitivity, but every single day, I gotta watch another young man without hope, without promise, be, be promised to without being delivered to, be shot at, and realize that his only option is to pick up a gun and shoot back while we provide no options. Oh yeah, a stadium's gonna be real nice, when yet we're not providing any other opportunities. There's $140 million in tax credits. Talk to me about how is pouring opportunity back into my community and then I could support it. That's it. There's no negotiating on that. They can't pay me on the side. You can't talk to me side, ear hustle me for nothing. If there's no opportunity for my young people, you know what I do. Listen, I don't want to feed more crackheads in the corner of my community. I don't want to feed more, let me be politically correct. I don't want to feed more drug users coming from a drug addicted or drug abusers coming from other communities being dropped off here and do feeding stands and ask people to create more uh, uh, food banks. No, I want to see people have opportunities, job opportunities, to have some promise. They don't even have, they don't even have the, 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 uh, the, the foresight or, or the vi vision to even have opportunity within this administration. What they did with the... No, Madam Clerk. Thank you. Councilman Kali. Thank you, Madam Clerk. And Councilman Jackson, I'd be remiss if I did not address your highly insensitive and reprehensible remarks. You offended a lot of people. A lot of people, and you, you may not know it, and you're smirking, which only adds insult to injury. And the BA asked you for an apology, and you didn't do that. So that completely shows how you feel about what you said. So once again, the biggest victory tonight is for the children and all Pattersonians who have an opportunity to play on that field once again. Thank you. Thank you very much. Council President. Councilman Jackson. The disrespect continues to, 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 uh, to run rampant through these uh, chambers. I clearly apologized, and I'll apologize again. I clearly talked about it being an insensitive comment, and I'll do it again. And I smirk because the objective of the mayor to try to make this a bigger issue than what it is, I mean, you're welcome to do so. But when the family of Jameek Lowry came to the podium night after night, you sat there with a stupid smirk on your face and didn't say a damn word. This guy, man, don't try to come here and play me with that, man. That's, that's childish. That's childish. To make a statement about that, that to, to, to try to haggle, it's a common statement that's been made for years. For years. Of course you never made it. But I'm sure you never use the N-word too, right? Yeah, right. Councilman Jackson, yeah. Count, um, Ming said that the tape is going to cut off, so just wanted you to okay. go Okay. So, I mean, you can, you can continue to act insensitive all you want to, but yet and still, what have you done to address the shootings in my ward? What have you done to address the shootings in this community? When have you come forward to, the, to, to, to make sure that there are, there are no more ailments like that, the drug selling in the neighborhood? What have you done to make sure that we don't, get, we don't have people getting dropped off and we're not using hundreds of thousands of dollars of uh, Narcan every year? You've done nothing. I haven't seen one press conference of yours that's been effective. Listen, you won this, 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 thing, this thing and I take my hat off to you. You're a great politician. I'm no politician. I'm not, I'm not polished in those areas and I'll acknowledge that. But I'll tell you what I am. I'm a complete advocate for the community and I'll continue to do it. If I gotta stand on here and pounce on your head every night, I'll do it. Because, because the people in this community haven't felt any relief since you've been there. But you wanna sit here and try to target a comment that I made? Listen, let me say it again. Let me say it again. 
One of my biggest mentors, one of my biggest mentors is, is a Jewish person. It was never with any malice or any offense was it, was it meant. You could try to twist it into whatever you want to twist it into. The BA didn't have one thing to say when that family was here, and neither did you. Neither did you. When you spent $100,000 to barricade off the walls, I was the person that went out in front of this building and told those cops that you said, don't let anybody in here. No, this is a public building. They're here to address the issues, and we're going to let them in. But you don't want to stand on that, but you're going to try to you know, make this into a bigger issue. You're welcome to do so. I'll defend myself on this as I have on every, any other issue. And I stand here completely convicted to represent the community's Council interest, Jackson. that's it. No, 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 Council President, no. The tape went off, no. that's all I wanted you to it's know. It's all right, I, I don't do this for a show. I'm, there's, there's cameras rolling in here on Facebook Live or whatever else they need, if the public needs to see it. But I tell you what, I'm sitting here completely being responsible for the, for the community's interest. And I could point, case in point out each and every time when our community takes it in the mouth, takes it on the chin. Was I insensitive to, to something else there too, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mayor? But anyway, you can go ahead and try to get that off. I, don't, I won't you. buy into it. Thank you very much. We're taking a five minute while he's changing the tape and we'll be right back. Five minutes. Uh, Madam Clerk, the next item we're gonna take in five minutes. Understand that. All the, a lot of what's being said is a game. He wanted to attack Mike Jackson. I think that was coward for them to attack that man. You know doggone well that Mike Jackson did not mean to be an insult to anybody. Now, if you want to talk about people being insulted, the black community was insulted with the way that mayor treated them when Jameek Lowry was killed in the custody of the police department. The family was insulted when he lied to the community and told everybody that Jameek had meningitis. He was, the, the community was insulted when he sent police officers out there to guard off the people's house so the people did not have a way to get in and voice their disdain with his administration. He better not get started with me on how people are upset. He got a lot of nerve to come in here and try to use Mike Jackson as a pinball. You pick a fight with him, you pick a fight with me. I'm not afraid of none of you devils. You understand that? I'm not calling the devil, the, the council devils. I'm talking to this administration. You are dealing with a politician, a plain and simple politician. There was no victory tonight, only for the people whose pockets are going to be padded now. That's who got the victory tonight. The people that are getting ready to go and pop bottles of champagne and start throwing dollars at women. Those are the people that won tonight. But the children are not going to win unless that place is done. That's it. Madam Clerk, next speaker. Yes, sir. next speaker is Mr. Elvis Durham. Elvis, oh, he's here. <clears throat> Mr. Elvis Durham, Fourth War, 283 Broadway. Well, first thing I want to say, I'm surprised with Councilwoman at Law's Lisa Mims. Thank you for speaking up. I didn't know you had it in you. I got another look at you. I respect you. You ain't no freshman no more. I always respect you, but you ain't no freshman no more. Grew up, you're a senior. <laughs> anyway, I see everybody happy about Hitchcock Stadium. That's good. I'm going to take my time on this. Hiscuff Stadium. I don't got nothing against Hiscuff Stadium. I got something against what y'all want to do, the, the vertebrates want to do. You, why would you put a senior, senior citizen home in the middle of Hiscuff Stadium? Don't make no sense. But y'all voted on it. And um, Corby T, um, I guess he left. But, um, they don't have no choice but to fix up Hiscup Stadium because this is federal money. And if this project don't get done, somebody going to jail. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I, I, don't, I need some more fingers. So y'all don't got no choice. Don't play with federal money. Okay? Be careful. 
And Andre, Mayor Andre Sayer, where he at? Okay, Andre Sayer, man, you know you my boy, but why are you gonna mess with my big boy? You mess with Mike Jackson, you mess with me, you mess with the first war, and you mess with the fourth war. Okay, so bring that down a little bit, Mayor. Let's all get along. Okay, let's build this city the right way. Okay, you know how you build it the right way? You got a lot of drug dealers out there on the streets looking for jobs, but can't get a job because they got federal records. But we got over $130 million from the state, federal money. Let's do the right thing with that money. Okay, when these businesses want to come here, Oh, just tell them, you scratch my back, I scratch your back. Give these people folks job, folks did. These drug dealers, they deserve a second chance. Half of these people don't want to sell drugs no more. But society don't give them no, no choice. They go, put out, they, go, they go put in the application, and they push, they push the application to the side. Mr. McCall, Mr. McCall, how you doing? I'm here. I'm, I'm speaking to you, okay, cause, because the mayor is not here, so you, you know, you here. We got businesses about to come. You got over $130 million. You're about to build a garage by the, um, by the um, National Park, by Husker Stadium. Can you make sure that these people get jobs in, in Husker Stadium, in the new garage, in these new restaurants that's, that y'all talking about? Can you, can you do that, sir? It's all about Patterson. Remember your mayor, our mayor said one Patterson. Is it really one Patterson? Because I'm for the people. I'm for African American, I'm for Hispanics. I don't care what race you is, I'm, I represent the people. So I'm asking, is it one Patterson? Mister, you, um, you, you represent the mayor right now. I want, thank you. One Patterson. Okay. God bless you. Thank you very much, Madam Clerk. Yes, next speaker is Mr. Lynch, Donald Lynch. It's good to address, but it's on respect. It's a hot room here tonight. It's good to Hi, Donald Lynch. Uh, I wish the mayor hadn't left, and uh, Mr. Spiegel, because the last time I had a meeting with them at School 28, they were supposed to give me some data on my street with the traffic, but I see they booked up. And that's just like them. But I want to say that if we can't trust the law enforcement, and we can't, we damn sure can't trust the mayor, because he done sold us, he done sold us out. He done sold us out. Now you can, any, I don't care who go back and tell him, because I'm a man, I would tell him myself. Next thing, I came to this podium, the last council meeting, and I made a statement. I was talking about National Night Out, uh, and I said right, none of the councilors came, even the first ward council. But the councilman said he brought water, and I said I didn't see it, which I didn't. But I went home, and I found out through management he did bring some stuff. And right now, I apologize to you like a man. You did do it. But people... We can't miss this opportunity for the school board meeting, school board election. Mr. T didn't win the last time. If we want Dr. Hodges to have some help on that school board, we got to get out and vote. Mr. T deserved to be on that school board because he will work his behind off. So we need to get out and support Mr. T. And the last thing, um, Mr. B.A., um, you said you was upset what Mr. Jackson had said. But it, if you didn't get upset when you was a little boy coming up and what you was called, you should have never said you've been upset. Thank you. Madam Clerk, next speaker, please. Yes, ma'am. Next speaker is Ms. Um, Francisca Nunez. Good evening, um, Francisca Nunez, 26 Sandy's Court. Mine's is more as a statement towards the, the mayor. Um, I'm totally fed up with the juvenile action of this mayor. 
Five different occasions, he has seen me at events and totally ignored me, shaking people's hands left and right. You would think the first time was a mistake, but it happened two more times after the first incident. Then I read a post by, posted by Mr. Ernest Rucker exhibiting the same treatment to his wife, Commissioner Charlotte Shepherson. On the morning of the event at the Breakfast of the Champions, I was sitting with Ms. Charlotte Shepherson. He went to various tables, hand by hand, person by person, and dismissed me and Charlotte Shepherson. Later on that day, we went to another event, crown, crowning of the queens at Barber Park. And by the, my amazement, he did it again. I've been, around, I've been around long enough to know how a mayor's supposed to act. But this small man, other than during this campaign, he has a distaste, strong woman of color. I talked to Commissioner Shepherson, her friends, and mines, so we can send a clear message to Mr. Andres Sayer. Refuse to call him Mayor Andres Sayer because he does not have what it takes to be the mayor of the third largest city of New Jersey. We will be organizing a woman of color against Andres Sayer. Maybe this will wake him up so he would understand that he would just not take our vote. He will always understand our opinion and take it seriously. This juvenile mayor will respect us. He talks about one Patterson, he's about himself. Thank, thank you, M Madam Clerk, next speaker. Yes, ma'am, next speaker is Mr. Ernest Rucker. I mean, do you need my name for the record? I think you all know me, Ernest Rucker Patterson. I'm here also on that same issue. The woman that he decided to disrespect is my wife. I saw him that morning at the breakfast that Councilwoman Lisa Mims had, and I'm really ashamed of myself because the things I called him was beneath me as a man. But he needs to understand something. You come after mine, I'm coming after you. This mayor has taken advantage of the votes he has received in the black community. He has taken advantage of that. He has ignored that we are the community that put him over. This will be a first time mayor because I'm working diligently to make sure that my message is heard throughout this community. That same day we're talking about the mayor came into a lodge, which I'm a member of, the Elks Lodge on Ellison Street. I'm going to show you how insensitive this man was. A bunch of seniors sit at the bar having a good time. Probably one of the first days out, the second day's house they, they were at. He came in, he started at the beginning, began to shake hands, and one of the old ladies said, Mr. Mayor, you know, we all voted for you. Can you at least buy us a drink? She said, no, 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 I don't do that. <laughs> he doesn't understand the community that he begged for those votes from. We're not fools. I can support a good plan the mayor has, but I can't support the mayor. We were worrying about making sure this city runs. And if it's a good plan, Ernest Rooker's going to be on top of it. But I don't want the mayor to believe I forgot what he did to my wife. See, in my community, that will get you hit in your mouth. So I want to make it clear. And, I, and, and administration, please deliver this message. Tell the mayor, my community is waking up. Every day, I hear supporters of his from the black community talking about the job he's not doing, the plan he does not have. I'm tired of press conferences. When is we going to have a press conferences on the shootings in the city of Patterson? Where's the plan? When are we going to have a conference, a press conference, on all these addicts running the streets and shooting dopes in the middle of our streets and in front of our children? Where's the conference? We're tired. We're not just tired of being tired. We are aching right now. If the mayor gets one more press conference, I'm going to be there, 
And if he's not saying something about these shootings and these kids in the streets and education, I'm going to break up the conference. And everybody up there know me. And Madam, uh, Madam President, I'm going to do you a favor tonight. I'm not going to say in closing. Because I'm pissed off enough not to say it tonight. Have a good night, ladies and gentlemen. I'll see you all very shortly. Good night, Mr. Mayor, with a small M. Thank you very much, Thank you. Mr. Rudd. Next speaker, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Hakeem. Commissioner Bilal Hakeem. Yes, I'm here. It's uh, past my bedtime because I do, I do um, try to go to bed early because I rise early. Uh, good evening, um, Council. Good evening, Council. Good evening. You know, y'all were so silent. You know, I always say that the silent majority is in the cemetery. First of all, I want to thank those council people that did um, support us for the African Family Day. We do appreciate you, um, Council or Woman uh, of the Fourth Ward, Ruby Cotton, Al Abdul Aziz, <coughs> out of the Sixth Ward, Councilwoman at Large, uh, Dr. Lalisa Mims, and um, Councilman. Um, of the third war, William uh, McCoy. I will get the thank you cards to you uh, from my <coughs> secretary tomorrow. I want to uh, just say um, for the record, I rock with Councilman Mike Jackson. Okay, I rock. With a, on the street they say it a little different and in this here form, I just can't talk like that. But I just wanna let you know, I rock with Mike, Mike Jackson, Councilman Mike Jackson. Uh, my name is not Lazarus. My name is not Steppin Fetchin. My name is not Pee Wee Herman. We, the descendants of Akubilan, known as the continent of Africa, you're the mayor of the historian, I am too, <clears throat> are the victims of the Ma'afa, the Ma'afa, a key Swahili word, which means the great tragedy. We are Semitic people. So I want to just advise all of you, and you know, um, giving advice is a good thing. Don't blow this asinine sap rap and make it the issue because you all seem to have had a selective uh, outrage and sensitivity because the councilmen use a poor choice of words. To, pull, to, to focus on that, to pull from the gravity of the message that he was driving home, which is needed. They just had the breakfast of champion. We have a champion in Councilman Michael Jackson. We have a champion in Councilman Michael Jackson. We have a champion in Councilman Michael Jackson. We, Jackson. we are the victims of the Ma'afa. So much so that we still don't know who we are. We come from nigger, color, coon, Negro, Afro-American, African-American, back to nigger, 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 nigger. Okay? So let's be clear um, about that. Don't try to pull from the gravity of the councilman's message. Don't do that. That's a very low blow, waiting uh, uh, for a person, uh, uh, they have a little gnat and you have a log in your eye. Don't do that. It's hypocrisy. If you want to have outrage and sensitivity about something, I'm going to give y'all something right now. Miss Monique and Miss Taisha, please come up here. These are two inspectors from the city of Patterson. I asked them to come. They don't know them to come to these meetings and sit all this here time. And I just asked you, oh, council president and council, and does me just for 60 more seconds, and I'll be finished with this here. These women, and I was appointed as the vice president of Local 2272, 